2 Samuel chapter 17, and I want to read verses 6 and 7. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. And when Hushai was come to Absalom, Absalom spake unto him, saying, Ahithophel has spoken after this manner. Shall we do after his saying? If not, speak thou. And Hushai said unto Absalom, The consul that Ahithophel have given is not good at this time. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Here endeth the reading of God's holy word. The word of the Lord for the people of God. Amen. Somebody knows why I did that. <laughs> Amen. And so church, and so we are on the year theme, Kingdom Defenders. Kingdom Defenders. And we are on the series, Kingdom Design, The Life and Legacy of David. Taking our time with his life. And today we minister from the sermon topic, Consulting Consultants. Consulting Consultants. I begin. Everybody wants to be a consultant. Everybody wants to be a consultant. Everybody's an expert on some subject or another. We live in a time when people want to uh, exert their influence all the more. Many want to guide or advise another to make a certain choice, move in a certain direction. It's empowering. I understand that. Certainly in the era of mass social media. Hmm. Many have been given a platform from whence to share their advice with the masses. Many are now glorified advisors, counselors, psychologists, and consultants. There are those who are in need of a solution, and then there are many who are all too eager to offer assistance. No, 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 don't misunderstand me. Consulting and consulting are important. What is more important is who do you go to for consultation? Are they qualified spiritually, morally, intellectually? What track record do they have with regards to advising others? Hmm. Listen, when you need a consultant, hear me, you need an advisor or counselor who will guide you according to what's best for you and not what's best for them. I'm trying to help somebody. Uh, don't just listen to anybody. Let me, let me give you some scripture here. This is NIV. Proverbs 12 and 15. The way of fools seems right to them, but the wise listen to advice. Mm. Proverbs 15 and 22. Plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors they succeed. Proverbs 13 and 20. Walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. Now, church, you got to be wise and gain God's approval for who to listen to. 1 John 4 and 1, it reads, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit. Some people are so gullible. But test, you see that right there? Test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. You got a prophet around every corner right now. Boo! It's around the corner. <laughs> First Corinthians 1 and 25, it says, For the foolishness of God, my Lord, is wiser than human wisdom. And the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Go to God, y'all. John 16 and 13 says, But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. Church, just be sure that who counsels you has already been counseled by God. 
Make sure that whoever you're gleaning advice from, whoever you're gleaning direction from, that they've already been in touch with God. In our text, David is, King David is on the run. And sadly, his own son is after him and after the throne. This is a crucial time for David, and he has to be careful of whose advice he takes. His future and the future of Israel somewhat depends on the advice he receives from others. Not only this, his son Absalom is taking advice too. So not only are you taking advice, your enemy is taking advice. <laughs> right? Now, 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 what's the difference between David and Absalom when it comes to counsel? The difference is the heart of the recipient. David's heart is contrite. He's broke. He, he, he is broken and desires to have God's blessings upon whatever he does. Absalom, his heart is evil. Let me stop right here. My heart is desperately wicked. If I don't pull in the reins, find that I will do things that, I do, what? what? I'm doing what? I never thought in my life I would. Ah, but it, the, the heart, it'll trick you. Your own heart will deceive you. And you'll find yourself doing what you said you would never do. Hmm? Yeah. Absalom, his heart is evil. For he has allowed lust for power and position to cause him to plot and plan for the death of his own father. Did you hear me? Hmm. Well, let's look at the consultants today and see how they play in this account as we look at the following three points. Point number one, counselor number one. Counselor number one. Point number two, counselor number two. Counselor number two. And point number three, counselor chosen. Counselor chosen. You know, we make choices every day, you know. Hmm. Let's deal with it. Point number one, counselor number one. You know, let me bring that forward for me. Dang. <laughs> Have you ever been the, the target of somebody's dark boy? Uh, I... There's people right there moving. Lack of faith. That's what they have. Lack of faith. Lack of faith. One slip. One slip in the hand. You never know what'll happen. Put your hat down, Mother Ross. Are these sticky? At least it's hitting the board. Hey! See, and listen, listen. Let me, let me try to preach to you. I know where it is. Watch it. <laughs> All a part of the sermon. <laughs> sometimes they miss you completely. Oh, yeah. Whoosh up. Sometimes, sometimes they reach the outskirts of your life. And then sometimes, my God, they get so close to the Santa. I, I need for the church people to understand that in an era when so many are against the church, so many don't want to hear truth, that you have become the object of their discontent. You, 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 I don't know about you, I've had, I've had it where my face has been the bullseye. Huh? They woke up and all they saw was Maria Seaman and they just wanted to say, oh, they missed you? Oh, well, somebody else is going to get. Have you ever been the target of someone else's hate? where they want to take you out. It's not an easy thing. It's not comfortable. And this is where David finds himself, the target of someone's hatred, hmm? despised by so many. You know, you are the bullseye. Yet I remind you, while they're throwing darts, you better hear God's word. Ephesians 6 and 16, above all, what? 
taking the shield, I got faith, y'all. Taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. In other words, because, listen, I have more faith in God than your aim. I have more faith in God than your plans. And therefore, I'm not going to focus on the darts. I'm going to keep my faith in God. Because God, if you have established a thing, so shall it be. Their hostility. Yeah, I say this because when you are the target of another's hate, their angst, it is vital that your faith be placed in the one who is able to keep you from dangers, seen and unseen. Come on. As much as David has done wrong because he knew how to repent. Come on, y'all. He, he knew how to say, I, I, my bad, God. It was definitely me. It, wasn't, it was me. He knew how to repent. When you know how to do this, you will understand that God always has your back. Mm -hmm. Verse 1 says, moreover, Ahithophel said unto Absalom, let me now choose out 12,000 men, and I will arise and pursue after David this night. Now I remind you that Ahithophel is Bathsheba's grandpa, yes. grandfather. He wants David's premeditated murder of Uriah. He has headed out for David. He wants David destroyed. One of the heinous ways the devil destroys a parent is to separate them from their child. You think it's just happening in the 21st century? Hmm. Oftentimes, when the devil cannot get to the leader directly, they make a pathway to that leader through their vulnerable child. This is what's happening here. The devil is using the naturally lustful ways of Absalom to get to David. Ahithophel doesn't care for Absalom. He wants to kill David. Ahithophel is close to Absalom so that he can get close enough to David. He can get close enough to Absalom to influence Absalom to kill, kill David. Note that there is an urgency about Ahithophel and what he wants. No long-term planning. He wants to go get David tonight. I, I, I'm gonna get you to see, feel the atmosphere of what's happening. Two and three, two through four. It reads, and I will come upon him while he is weary and weak-handed and will make him afraid. And all the people that are with him shall flee and I will smite the king only. And I will bring back all the people unto thee. The man whom thou seekest is as, is as if all return, so all the people shall be in peace. And the saying please Absalom well, and all the elders of Israel. I told him, move this out of my way for me, please, sir. Thank you, Father. But they hold on. You're not, not you hold on. I'm talking to the story. Hold on. <laughs> Here. The one leading, Mr. Dallas, the one determining the pace of everything that is happening at this point is a half of how. He's telling the self pronounced, self proclaimed king. What's to do? And then they bring the elders all in. I have to get you to see that Absalom is under the influence of Ahithophel. And in so being under his influence, he's got even the elders. What's happening to Desani? Nobody been watching Ahithophel all this time? No, Ahithophel has one goal, kill David. Just one goal. And it's going to bring the king in line and all the elders. All the elders are submitting to a, a plan. Note how Ahithophel, through his counsel, brings in the king and the elders. 
You think people are trying to convince the normal church, regular church member? They're after the elders. <laughs> they got to get the leaders. All this, they say she's the greatest preacher and she teaches and all that type of stuff. They got to get those people. It's the same. I'm just trying to tell you. So this is vital to understand. Whenever the enemy wants to take out the leader, he must gain favor with those who are already around the leader. Ahithophel must be seen to be the answer, the solution to all that the self-pronounced king Absalom is in need of. Notice how you attack a leader. It's classic. Ahithophel gives a textbook procedure of how to take out a leader. You all want to know how to take a leader out? Look, I'm all, all afraid to say yes. It's in the text. Watch this. One, attack the leader when the leader is weak, vulnerable, weak. What they going to do? What's going on with him? Oh, it's a good time. Two, place fear in the heart of the leader. Ooh. Three, cause the leader to lose all of their support system. Four, once alone, take the leader out. You shy. Huh? Once alone, take the leader out. This is Ahithophel's advice to Absalom. This is how we get rid of David. This is the plot and ploy of counselor number one. All right, let's take a look at counselor number two, point number two. Counselor number two. <laughs> Five. Then said Absalom, call now Hushai, the archite, also. Let us hear likewise what he says. See, when you're puffed up full of yourself, all of you come give me advice, I'll choose. Let me make a choice. Set a banquet before me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I call this verse the transitional verse, eagle eyes. I call it transitional verse. I, I also look at this verse as God's before verse. <laughs> For God knew what Ahithophel would be up to, and before, Lord have mercy, Ahithophel's plan was conceived. God had already placed in the heart of David, send that hasty, remember him? Yes. No, you can't come. Oh, this is two or three sermons back, too. Hasty, remember Hushai? He wanted to go with David. I want to go with you. I want to go with you. He said, David said, no, 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 no. I don't need you to go with me. Go back there. I'm going to need you back in the enemy's camp. I'm going to need a pair of ears back there. Remember that? She's great. Some story in it. I'm telling you. David sent hasty Heshai back to Absalom to gain his trust as a counselor. Woo. Now here, before Absalom takes the advice of Ahithophel, he calls for the advice of Heshai. David's boy, six and seven. And when Hushai was come unto Absalom, Absalom spake unto him, saying, Ahithophel has spoken after this manner. Shall we do after his manner? Speak thou. Hushai was probably just, just calm. Seven. And Hushai said unto Absalom, The counsel that Ahithophel has given is not good at this time. <laughs> he could have just said, it's not good. But that would have been too harsh. <laughs> so he just says, in other words, you know, he's got something going on. Yeah, that's a pretty good plan. But we'll tuck that into the bag for the next time. It's just not the best plan this time. Buy this story something else. <laughs> I like how God orders things. Watch this. Let the enemy speak first. And then watch God counteract the plan of the enemy. That 
that's how God works. Let the enemy speak first. Let the enemy accuse first. Let the enemy shout first. You, no worries. No worries. God's got you. God will have the final say. Verse 8. 8 and 9. For said Hushai, thou knowest, watch this, thy father and his men, that they be mighty men, and they be chafed in their mind. And thy father is a man of war, and will not lodge with the people. Behold, he is hid now in some pit, or in some other place, and it will come to pass when some of them be overthrown at first, that whosoever heareth it will say, there is slaughter among the people that follow Absalom. Okay, let's talk about it, church. Hushai speaks truth to power. He speaks more realistically. For indeed, hear me, church, David is no weakling. Ahithophel talking about his, his weak. What? David ain't no weakling. Ahithophel may want to think David is weak. But the reality is, is that David is yet, Lord have mercy, a mighty warrior. Can I park here for a moment? That sometimes the enemy thinks you're weak. Sometimes the enemy thinks that you've been through so much. Ah, oh, you've experienced so much. So much has come against you. So many are against you. But let me tell you something. That if God has ever strengthened your hand before, that God will yet keep your hand strong. God will yet bring you through. That if God is for you, no man can be against you. God is about to make you to be a victorious person one more time. You're not weak. You may appear weak. Your situation may want to make you look weak. But if God is on your side, oh, if God is on your side, church, then you are more than a conqueror. Some trust in horses. Some trust in chariots. But I will trust in the name of the Lord. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run therein. And I say, you ain't weak. You ain't weak. Stronger than you think. Your situation doesn't determine your strength. As a matter of fact, according to God's word, if you are his child, if you are his servant, then when I am weak, I am strong. Huh? In other words, the strength is not my natural strength, but it's the strength of God Almighty himself. Yeah, David weak. Yeah, David is yet a mighty warrior. Hushai states... <laughs> That David and his men are chafed. Talk about this word here. Comes from the Hebrew word mar, <laughs> meaning bitter, angry, discontented, heavy. Did you read anywhere in there that the weak? So you got a Ahithophel saying, oh, oh, David's weak right now. <laughs> Hushai basically says, bro, you know your daddy? You have a nine of time he been weak? You think your daddy weak? I'm a, mm -hmm. They are now weak and tired as Ahithophel described. No, watch this. The vexed and angry. Now, it's one thing to be angry. When you're vexed and angry, your anger just went up a whole nother level. Just a whole nother, a whole nother level. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Listen. This is what a hippa, this is what Hushai says. If you bother these men, they will be like, like a bear robbed of her whelps. In the field. So you know I had to go pull up a YouTube or two. <laughs> I watched this she bear. Now notice, he didn't say David's like a he bear. 
<laughs> Whoosh, woo Hold on, you, you might as well put me in jail right now. In your chair. He said, David is like a she bear protecting her cubs. So I watched this YouTube. <laughs> so he had the mama, cub, the mama bear, and he had these the two cubs. He had this stream, right? This water. And it was another, it was another bear, a male bear over there. <laughs> she knew, but first, first he came over. And she rose up. <laughs> he went tacking, right? They kept the film running. He got a little bit of energy more, right? And then he was over here, right? This the guy bear. God, God. Like, like she, who this woman did? She is. I'm gonna get her trying to, trying to stage me, upstage me, right? So he's up there, he's doing that. She is over her saying, "Oh no, he didn't. Oh no, he didn't. He's coming after me again." The mama bear looks at him, goes running across the lake, and. I was exhausted for those four minutes and 50. <laughs> she developed a strength to protect her own. There's nothing like a mother who will protect their own. See, daddy may go out to work and come back. Mama stay at home, gonna protect. It's just a different feeling. You, you know, daddy can't say, but the diamonds I carried you. Uh-uh. Mama? Mama? Mama gonna make up a new song. You wanna hear the new song? Yeah. I know you do, because you know it's coming on by God's spirit right now. She's good. For the nine months I carried you. Stretch marks and bruise for you. I wish I could charge. But my bus size increase, and my nurse got a little wider, but I'm not going to charge. They told me if I just watched the wall and focused on a certain spot, the labor would be OK. But I ran in there with my legs all up. I almost took my husband off the cop. Ah, uh, but I'm not going to charge. There's, there's a different, it's a different experience with the woman. Huh? What? Huh? What? It's, let me tell you how it goes. She's, she's not just chat. Protecting the cubs. Oh, she, that's what I'm saying. She said, all I read, Negro bear you want. Well, you want it. I watched it. I watched it. Yeah, I watched. I, I watched some footage. That's how they protect. Stop laughing. That's how they protect their young, their whelps. You know, ain't nobody allowed to hit my children or, or, or discipline my children a certain way but me when they're young. Let's just say that if David and his men are being compared to the attributes of a bear protecting their own cubs, you don't want to mess with David. So again, you got to get the difference. A hip of foul saying, oh, David's weak. David's weak-handed. Hushai said, David, David, oh, what? Shoot. That's, and that's what the bear did, too. He gave that sheep bear went, shoot. I said, my Lord. You know. Hushai warns Absalom that if you follow a hip of plans, you may take out some of his man. But after that, you're going to suffer great loss. Then Hushai adds this, Tan. And he also that is valiant, whose heart is as the heart of a lion, shall utterly melt. 
For all Israel knoweth that thy father is a mighty man, and they which be with, which be with him a valiant man. In other words, he's saying, yeah, you all act big and bad now. Be as bold as a lion now. You get in David's presence. You're moving from a lion to a mouse. Then mount. Bishai simply reminds Absalom that David has always been a, hmm? always been a fighter and that David has always been victorious in the battle. Yeah. Let's get that right. Not has he only always been a fighter, but in every battle he's been victorious. Perhaps I need to uh, encourage someone today that if God has previously <laughs> placed a fight in you, <laughs> that no plan of the enemy can harm you. If God gave you the fight to conquer before, you still got the fight in you. Huh? Huh? Don't fear the new battle. Don't fear the new enemy. Don't fear what you may have to go through. You still got fighting. The same fight God placed in you before is the same fight that God has within you. Don't fear what men can do unto you. Fight with your God-given power. Note that the mighty warrior David is surrounded by valiant men. Strength begets strength. That's some team, you know. That's some, that's some contingent of fighters. See, I like that because if I surround myself, even this whole church, with those who are fighters, then I, do, I don't have to fight to keep you here. Our focus is bringing others in and not on keeping each other in. Uh-huh. Because when you have a contingent of fighters, you shall prevail. Now listen to the advice of counselor number two. Here's counselor number two. <laughs> 11 and 12. Therefore, I counsel that all Israel be generally gathered unto thee from Dan even to Beersheba, as the sand that is by the sea for multitude, and that thou go to battle in thine own person. So shall we come upon him in some place where he shall be found, and we will light upon him as the dew falleth on the ground. And of him and of all the men that are with him, there shall not be left so much as one. <laughs> so the advice of counsel number two is one, gather all of your people with you. Two, you lead the battle. Three, sneak upon him. Sneak, 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 sneak attack. Four, kill him and all of his men. <laughs> Thirteen, I'm going to talk about it. Thirteen, moreover, if he be gotten into a city, then shall all Israel bring ropes to that city, and we shall draw it into the river until there be not one, not one, not one small stand father. And you ought to be laughing. Because this is what the commentary is pointing to. They said, this is so ridiculous, but it's playing up to, up to Absalom. He says, what if David just happens to escape? Whatever city you go through, what turned on the wall? They wouldn't even be able to find a stand that made up the wall. You know that's crazy. But anyway, to this, Hushai <laughs> even adds that, hey, David makes it to a city. We'll take ropes and whatever else we need to pull the on the walls of the city, the city, and there will not be left standing one stone. Point number three, counselor chosen. So we got to see what's happening. See what's happening, these two plans. My handwriting has never been the best, and God has not granted me a miracle of handwriting. So plan A, right? Plan A, all right? The basic thing for plan A is that David is the target, right? David's the target, and Ahithophel says, 
send people, go in, get David, just take David out, right? And all of the people who are with David, bring them back to the city, and they'll be your, they'll be your people now, right? Okay, 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 they'll be my people. Plan B, David's still the target. Can't change the target. I don't mess up the story. And you would know you're trying something. David's still the target. But this time, <laughs> this time, Hushai says, Absalom, you're a bad mama jamma. You go in there, king. Because you're sharp. You go in there, and no, you're not going to learn. You're getting everybody from every tribe. You get them from Dan to Bathsheba. And you take your mighty army. And with your mighty army, though, you know, because David's strong, right? So with your mighty army, shh, what you going to do? Then I like, because you got all these people, right? All these people with you. With your mighty army, shh. You, King Absalom, you light Tiptoe, tiptoe, shh, like the dew that falleth on the ground. Go in and take your daddy out, right? And when that happens, don't bring these, um, don't bring David's people back. No, 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 no. All your man, kill David's people. <laughs> people, these are two diametrically opposed plans. Which plan will win out? You have to think. What is the character of Absalom? Absalom, beautiful, always being bigged up by people, not one blemish on him. He's beautiful. He is king. He's gorgeous. So all you got to do is play to his ego. Just play to his ego. Ain't got to be the truth. <laughs> play to his ego. Let me read here. Look. We look at both plans, and we understand why Absalom chooses to play on his horse. It's like, I hit the, I hit the fowl's plan. You're just taking out. Somebody's taking out the king and bringing all his people back to me. Why well, want his own stupid people anyway? Why well, want him? No, I'm glorious. I'm better than my dad, daddy. I, I can fight better. I'm, I'm better looking every day. I'm going in myself and taking him out. See? This is a good up setup. This is a setup for next week. You know that, right? Okay. First plan by Ahithophel actually came from the, look at this, from the heart of Ahithophel. Remember Ahithophel, grandpa of Bathsheba, he, his only after David. He doesn't want anybody else dead. He just wants revenge for what happened to Uriah. But this plan here is going to get more, more, more victims. You're going to make the king seem like more than a conqueror, right? So the first initial plan, plan A, it looked like a hippophile. His plan said, go after David alone. He's weak. And once you take him out, I'll bring the other people back to you. Second plan by Hushai, which actually came from from Hushai's heart, meant that the plan looked like him. His plan said, Absalom, gather all of Israel to your bosom. Then take your mighty man and you lead him in war. Can you imagine? Oh, you're great. Oh, you're better than your daddy. Oh, you're stronger. Mm-hmm. Come upon David like the dew gently falls upon the ground and kill David 
and all his mighty man, because that'll make you mighty. See, see? Church, what you have to see here is that Hushai is playing to the ego of Absalom. Hushai is making the battle look more glorious, more prestigious, more brilliant, more beautiful. Just like him. So guess which plan Absalom goes with? Oh, yes, he will. Plan B, the glorious one. Hushai's plan. Verse 14, my last verse for today. Watch this. And Absalom and all the men of Israel said, Hey, <laughs> the counsel of Hushai the archer is better than the counsel of Ahithophel. For the Lord had appointed to defeat the good counsel of Ahithophel to the intent that the Lord might bring evil upon Absalom. Lord's got an old plan. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it sounds like. I said God has it all in control. Ahithophel thinks it's him in charge. Hushai thinks it's him in charge. No, God is sovereign. He is in charge of everything going on. That's why you don't fight in your own flesh. You don't fight in your own spirit. You've got to trust God in the matter. Oh, yes, the Lord hath appointed. He has appointed. The Lord has appointed for this occasion to be in charge of who should be in charge of how the battle will go. Don't fear the battle when God goes before you. I don't care what you're dealing with. Huh? What type of battle it is. If God goes before you, he has already scheduled, have mercy, an appointment. You're not walking to nothing. You're not walking as it were to something that has not been established. God, remember, he already knows your end from your beginning. And so God has appointed an end. Don't fear the battle when God goes before you. God will give you the victory. I don't care how much connive and what. I don't care how much strategy, what. Don't, listen, church, don't get caught up in the strategy of your enemy. Because it can take your mind, it can take your heart. Yeah, yeah. You start getting all concerned and worried. Like, if this happens, then, okay, if they're going to do this, mm, no, 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 no. God has kept you thus far. Every time that the enemy came after you, come on, Mr. Sister Bianca, you know what I'm saying, to destroy your life, to discourage you. Hmm? But you're still here. That tells me that even when you didn't know it, God had an appointment for you. In other words, God, listen, listen this is what I just heard by the Holy Ghost. An appointment by God means that God insists that you make it to your destination. Hmm? God insisted. That's why we thank God for danger seen and unseen that he keeps us from them. Whatever the crisis is in your life, God has a destiny for you. And he will get you through the crisis so that you can get to your appointed time. You think that God had unappointed David as king? So it doesn't matter how many people appoint themselves to a position that you hold. Until God desires that the leadership changes. And you are yet in your place for such a time. Come on, I'm talking about leaders of departments. I'm talking about leaders on your job, job position. Hmm? This is what I also see. Some, sometimes we think we're not got a position. Your very job is your position. I don't care if you're a street sweeper. You, you do it so, so well that nobody can do it like you do it. No Ahithophel can counsel you out of the will of God. Let him talk. I ain't never been bothered by a talker. Matter of fact, I, I, I kind of like when they talk because they get preoccupied. You know what I do? Keep on walking to my purpose. Come on. 
too many things ahead. To let the plans, the conniving plans of other stuff. You've heard the sermon today. One I believe that challenges us to discern who to receive advice from. <laughs> You're receiving advice from people and you're more miserable, you have more confusion in your life, you don't know if you're coming or going, people look at you, don't know if you're coming or going, you, 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 you must be talking to a hit of style. God already has somebody in your life positioned, your Heshad, to receive good counsel from. I find we live in a time where so many people are giving advice that people just want to run hither to and fro. This person, what you think? What you think? No, no. Stop. Stand still. Go on. Go on. What is it that you said? Okay, that's the end that you have for me, God? All right, let me hear what you're saying, what you're saying. I guarantee you somebody's plan doesn't line up with what God's plan is. If you're under the sound of my voice today and you're saying, you know what? That's been a part of my challenge. What next? Lord, what plan do you have for me? Whose advice do I take? I want you to stand up to your feet. Stand up to your feet where you are. You're challenged by it. It's, it's a real deal. 